A base keys. Keys are a very important part of the structure of a table and a key part of a relational database. They ensure each record within a table can be uniquely identified by one field or a combination of fields within the table. Keys enforce integrity among the tables and also help identify the relationship between tables. There are many kinds of keys. Here we are discussing the most important two. Primary key. A primary key consists of one or more fields that uniquely identify each other. Often there is a unique identification number such as an ID number, a serial number or a code that serves as a primary key. For example, you might have a customer's table where each customer has a unique customer ID number. The customer ID field is the primary key of the customer's table. Sometimes more than one fields are taken together to provide provide unique values for primary key. For example, you might use a combination of last name, first name and date of birth as the primary key for a table about people. Foreign key. A foreign key is generally a primary key from one table that appears as a field in another where the first table has a relationship to the second. A foreign key contains values that correspond to values in the primary key of another table. For example, you might have an orders table in which each order has a customer ID number that corresponds to a record in a customer's table having a field ID as a primary key. The customer ID field is a foreign key of the orders table. The correspondence of values between key fields forms the basis of a table relationship. Benefits of using relationships Keeping data separated in related tables produces benefits. Consistency As each item of data is recorded only once in one table, there is less opportunity for ambiguity or inconsistency. For example, you store a customer's details only once in one table. Customers Rather than storing it repeatedly wherever you refer a customer, which might be inconsistent. Efficiency. Recording data in only one place seems you use less disk space. Moreover, smaller tables tend to provide data more quickly than larger tables. Finally, if you don't use separate tables for separate subjects, you will introduce null values, the absence of data in the table, and redundancy into your tables, both of which can waste space and slow down performance. Comprehensibility. The design of a database is easier to understand if the subjects are properly separated into tables. Plan your tables with relationships in mind. You can use the lookup wizard to create a foreign key field if the table that contains the corresponding primary key already exists. The lookup wizard creates the relationship for you. Getting started. You already know how to start any application in Microsoft Office. You are also familiar with the new Microsoft Office Fluent user interface in which the complex menus and toolbars have been replaced with a ribbon. Commands and features are now easier to find on task-oriented tabs that contain logical groups of commands and activities. Many dialog boxes are replaced with drop-down galleries that display the available options and descriptive tool tips or sample previews are provided that help you to choose the right option. The File tab in Microsoft Office 2010 replaces the Microsoft Office button with File tab and File menu used in earlier releases of Microsoft Office. When you click the File tab, you can see the Microsoft Office Backstage view where you manage your files. Now let us start working with MS Access. Click on MS Access icon and you are presented with a new screen familiar to the screen. Creating a new database. On the file menu, click New. You can either choose blank database from available templates or any form of database from office.com templates. Give an appropriate name and click on Create. Adding tables to database. Navigate to Create tab. Click Table to add a table. From the left pane, right-click Table 1 and select Design View or you can also click a small button on the bottom right corner of the window. Give an appropriate name to this table and click on OK. In Design View, you can name table columns and set field properties also. 
Choose primary key to uniquely identify each record in the table. Now the basic table has been created and added in the database. You can save it for later use and create more tables required in the database. To save a new table, select the table you want to save by clicking Save option in the File tab or click Save command on the Quick Access toolbar or press Ctrl plus S on your keyboard. When first time you save a table, it will prompt you to name it. Enter the desired name, then click OK. The table will be saved. Adding records and entering data. To start filling tables, switch to Data Sheet view by clicking the small button on the bottom right of the window. You will see the columns created in Design view and constraints applied. Simply begin typing in the row below your last added record. Entering information in Data Sheet view is designed to be very similar to working in a Microsoft Office Excel worksheet. The table structure is created while you enter the data. Anytime you can add a new column to the table, a new field is defined. Access automatically sets each field's data type based on the data you enter. Sometimes while entering data into a record, a window pops up and telling you the data you have entered is invalid. This means the field has a validation rule about the type of data that can appear in that field. Click OK and re-enter data following the instructions in the pop-up window. Caution! Saving early at small intervals can prevent your work from being lost. To close the table, select the table you want to close. Click the Close button on the right of the document title bar. If there are any unsaved changes to the table, you will be prompted to save it. Select Yes to save. No to close it without saving your changes. Select Cancel to leave the table open. Caution: Be sure to save any unsaved records before closing a table. To open a table, click on File and then Open. Locate the file and click Open. The object will appear as a tab in the document title bar. By default, the most recently opened object will appear in the main window as the current object. To view another open object, click its tab in the document title bar. Exit MS Access 2010. Select the File tab to go to Backstage View. Select Exit.